I call the Honourable John Banks. Mr Speaker, some of us have been very concerned about this legislation for as long as it was suggested that it was going to arrive on the floor of this Parliament. And ten Parliaments ago, uh, my views on these matters would have been easily dismissed with the narrative, well, nothing to fear, nothing to hide. Uh, but as you um, grow a little bit older, uh, there's plenty to fear. Um, there's plenty to fear uh, if you're not vigilant. So there are some very important principles on the line with this legislation. Firstly, we accept that we live in a free and democratic country. It's only free and it's only democratic because brave men and women have fought long and hard for these two pillars of a modern New Zealand. The state's primary role, of course, is the security and freedom of its citizens. Our security and our freedom to go about our lives fulfilled and safe. To give the state the mandate to protect us, they inevitably need powers, legislative powers. And sometimes it could be argued, and I wouldn't argue, that these powers could be seen as draconian. But for those of us who seek, for those who seek, Mr Speaker, to do harm to us, have all the powers, have all the powers. And the only way we're going to protect good people from bad people is give the state the necessary powers and the balance required to protect us from the bad. So I rise on behalf of the ACT Party to support the third reading of the Search and Surveillance Bill. This bill is well overdue and will provide much needed consistency and much needed oversight to the way the police and other agencies use search and surveillance. Because the framework around their legislative ability to do that in the past has been at very least woolly and sometimes illegal. It has been a long time coming, but that's only fitting for a bill that required so much intense scrutiny and consideration. And I want to thank the Minister for allowing me to ear bash her at every opportunity about the importance of the matters that the ACT Party raised on day one alongside the Labor Party and others. ACT believes that it's important to strike the right balance between protecting individuals from the power of the state while at the same time ensuring the state has the ability to protect individuals from people who may want to do harm. That means making sure agents of the government, often faceless agents of the government, can't just walk into your house and search it for no good reason, while also making sure that with the correct oversight, police can search and carry out surveillance against those who may be committing serious crimes against us. That balance is hard to get right. But after much scrutiny and many changes, ACT believes that this bill has managed to get that fine line balance about right. Before I talk about a few of the more controversial aspects of the bill following on from the Labor spokesman on these matters, the Act Party played last term a very important role in the due process that was followed on the Video Surveillance Temporary Measures Bill. And we clearly understand why that was necessary and we enabled uh, the government to get that in place. A Supreme Court decision, Mr Speaker, last year meant Parliament had to take swift action to ensure important police investigations into serious crimes were not jeopardised. ACT insisted 
that the bill went to the Select Committee for robust scrutiny, and I agree with the Minister that the Select Committee did a great job in scrutinising that bill, as did uh, Charles Chauvel, uh, the well-educated member of the legal front from the opposition. So I'd like to also acknowledge the ACT Party's former deputy leader in this House, John Biscowan, for his work on this bill. The ACT Party will continue to play a vital role in ensuring due process is followed and the executive power is managed and wielded properly. This parliament is going to hear a lot, Mr Speaker, from me in my 10th term here about the balance between the rights of the individuals and the responsibilities of the state. Because when you've been around as long as I have and witnessed what we have over 10 terms of this parliament, you can clearly understand that this parliament's responsibility is to make sure that agents of the state have only the necessary executive powers to do the work to deliver the protection which is foremost responsibility of the government in protecting us all from bad people. For instance, I will have plenty to say about the Arms Amendment Bill as it slowly winds its way through the backroom processes of this Parliament. Again, the ACT Party will be carefully weighing the philosophy, concepts and principles of good arms control legislation against the rights of lawful gun ownership. And this is precisely the same balance that we're dealing with today in this bill and the balance that the Select Committee on Search and Surveillance had to put in place and the slide rule that they used on every clause of this bill. And my observation of these matters, Mr Speaker, is that the Select Committee did a first-class job. The Minister, Judith Collins, showed first-class leadership in opening her mind to the views of the minority in this House about some good ideas that she said, on balance, we'll incorporate to get something good and sustainable. The Justice and Electoral Committee received an overwhelming number of submissions on the bill, and you shouldn't be surprised. It took into account the views of the public and the legal community, and it is thanks to their hard work, the submitted hard work, that the bill now strikes a much, much better balance between civil liberties and police powers. Civil liberties in their most simple expression and, complete, and, and police powers. I want to congratulate the chairman of the committee at the time, the Honourable Chester Burrows, for his effort. A first-class member of parliament, a lawyer by training, a policeman by professional, and someone who believes that we should have the right to go about our lawful endeavours without being interrupted by agents of the state. I also want to pay tribute to the work of the Labour Party member Charles Chauvel. As I said, it is unfortunate, even churlish, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the Labour Party won't be supporting the bill today, as most of their concerns have been adequately addressed by the committee through the supplementary order papers. I'm surprised that the Labour Party didn't come into the House and deliver a similar narrative to this this afternoon, that on balance, in the interests of safety and security for the citizens of this country, we've probably got about as good as we can get. When we look deep into our souls, we've got it about as good as it can get. The Labour Party has talked a lot about the needs for media freedom, and we agree with that. The bill now allows journalists claims of privilege following the execution of a search warrant, production orders of examination order, to be heard by a High Court judge. The Act Party is not in the business of supporting changes to complex bills at the last moment. 
And that is why, after extensive consultation with the ACT Party, we've now got this. Finally, Mr Speaker, it is now Parliament's duty to keep a watching brief on how the powers enshrined in this new law are wielded and to ensure that we always balance the rights between privacy and surveillance. And this bill, I think, on balance, achieves that. I call the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Mr Speaker, I, I am pleased that I have...